Wow, Tim Curry's really let himself go. Oh, hello. You know, I was watching an instructional video on pie making a couple weeks ago, and the lazy son of a gun left out the instructions for the crust. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's laziness. When I was digging the foundation for this building, I... Oh, forget it, I'm tired. Just start the video. You'll need flour and shortening. You'll want to chill your shortening in the fridge for at least an hour beforehand. For a single crust pie, use one fourth cup of shortening. For a double crust pie, use one half a cup. Use three fourths cups of flour for a single crust pie, one and a half cups for a double crust, and add a dash of salt up to a fourth a teaspoon. Using a pastry blender, a fork, or your bare hands, mix the salt into the flour and then mix in the shortening. If you're using your bare hands, be especially careful, as you don't want to melt the shortening and you don't want to cream it into the flour. You want to make crumbs no larger than the size of a pea. Once the flour is mixed in and the mixture resembles crumbs like so, you'll need a glass of cold water with an ice cube in it. About a tablespoon at a time, add the cold water to the flour and shortening mixture and toss it with a fork. After a while, the mixture will start to clump together into a ball of dough. At this point, I usually set the fork aside and use my hands. You don't want to work the dough too much, just enough so that it is actually a dough. Once it is soft, firm, and dough-like, if you are making a double crust, divide the dough into two pieces. Form each piece into a ball, flatten it slightly, wrap it in plastic, and place them in the refrigerator to chill for at least a half an hour. After it has chilled, to roll it out, Place a piece of dough on a well-floured surface. You'll also want to coat your rolling pin in flour to keep the dough from sticking to it. Roll to and fro, pressing firmly with your rolling pin. Occasionally, or after every few rolls, you'll want to pick up the dough, turn it a quarter turn, and turn it over. This helps you to roll the dough out evenly and uniformly. You don't have to make a perfect circle. In fact, it doesn't matter what shape you make with your dough, it just needs to be larger than your pie tin. You want the dough to be about as thin as a quarter, but no thinner. Once the dough is rolled out thin enough and wide enough, carefully roll it around the rolling pin and roll it back out over your pie tin. Carefully press the dough down into the corners of the tin. If you're making a single crust pie, at this point you can simply trim the dough around the edge of the tin. If you're making a double crust, you can go ahead and add your filling. Roll out the second crust in the same way. Again, carefully roll it around the rolling pin and roll it back out over the filled bottom crust. You can use your fingers to pinch the two crusts together, or you can use a fork to press them together around the edge of the pie tin. Once the dough is sealed, use a knife to trim the excess dough from around the edge. Use a sharp knife to cut slits around the center of the pie. Don't throw away the excess dough. You'll probably have a small but significant amount of it, depending on the size of your pie tin. Roll it out as you would a normal pie crust. Mix together a few tablespoons of cinnamon and sugar. Sprinkle the cinnamon and sugar generously over the rolled out dough. Roll the dough from end to end into a log. If you have trouble getting it to stay rolled up, you can brush some water on. That'll help it to stick. Use a sharp knife to slice the log into sections about a quarter of an inch wide. Place the spirals not touching and evenly spaced on a baking sheet that's been lightly greased or lined with parchment paper. The baking time will vary as you'll be putting these in at whatever temperature your pie is baking at, but check them after 10 to 15 minutes and look for the bottoms to be slightly golden brown. They should keep well in a sealed container at room temperature or in the refrigerator for several days. You can also try substituting other fillings for cinnamon and sugar, such as jelly. Well, that was much easier and faster than I expected. I'm going to enjoy these with a cup of coffee, right after I roast the beans in my hot air popcorn popper, grind them with a mortar and pestle so as not to heat damage the flavor. Oh, forget it. Tune in next time for information on something else.